What's going on, ladies and gentlemen, sinks and inks, and welcome to Lactic Acid. I'm your host, Dominic Smith. As you probably have seen, we have a new logo, and I have to give myself credit for I made it by myself. I don't know anything about graphic design, but uh, I have to give a little self pat on the back for that bad boy. But the rest of the graphics that you'll see on social media was created by Catherine Burgess. Be sure to follow her. But to the main business, we have an Olympian. We have a goat. She puts the blue and blue collar worker, and she is faster than you on a daily basis. She is none other than Miss Val Constein. Val, I appreciate you coming on the show. What's going on? Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to get into this. Of course, I'm excited to have you on. Like I have another Olympian on the show. That means like I'm moving from low key to like key, which is the next state to high key. So it's a nice progression in my uh, career. All right. So I've been asking this question and I've gotten some interesting responses. So I'm curious to hear your answer. Ben and Jerry said, listen, Val, we tired of you working and stuff. We're going to hook you up. We're going to give you some money. And on top of that, we are going to make an ice cream promotion centered around you. You pick the two flavors that you want to combine and you pick the name of the promotion. What would the two flavors be and what would the name of the ice cream be? Oh, wow. Starting off with a really hard question. Hey. Um, <laughs> Ben and Jerry's are amazing. I'm lactose intolerant and I hate that I can't eat that stuff because it is the best ice cream oh, out there. Oh, crap. That, well, that, that is just But like... if they were going to make a lactose intolerant, like dairy-free ice cream, yeah, <laughs> which they do, and it's bomb, by the way, I would have to choose, I don't know if they already make this, but I would have to do like Oreos and peanut butter. And I'm not sure what I would want it to be called. Oreos, maybe... and, Oreos and peanut butter is such an OG snack. Uh, what movie was I just watching? That Oh, the one where the twins? Parrot switch? Trap. Yes, Parrot Trap. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I was watching that last night and she dipped Oreos and peanut butter. I remember the first time I saw it, I was like, girl, you crazy. Then you do it. And it's like, Ooh, okay. I, you know, yeah. she was on to something. Mm -hmm. Oh boy. I think I would call the promotion blue collar swag. Blue collar swag. Let's go. Cause that is <laughs> such like an OG, like workman's like, all you have are peanut butter and Oreos. You put them together. That, that's just me. Now, if you had something different than that, then we're rolling with yours. No, I like blue collar swag. That's cool. I'll take it. Yes, we got to sell this by the pound. Well, Ben or Jerry, if I can't get in touch with either one or both of you, one of you guys, we got to make that happen. And we could bring in lactate too. Um, yeah, let's go. Because they sell ice cream. It looks scary, but I have heard... <laughs> uh that it is it is good i listen you i have to move you up on the prayer list i feel so bad for lactose intolerant people because there's just such greatness but there are ways to get around it i i am discovering that yeah um and then a friend of mine said that there's a pill so you know miracles work miracles happen um, yeah but that pill only works for one serving oh that sucks yeah so you can so have like one slice of pizza or like one scoop of ice cream but if I'm going to eat dairy, I want to eat like a feast. I want cookies. I want cake. I want pizza, you know, pasta with Alfredo sauce. And it only works for one serving. So. So can you like take multiple pills or is it like, oh, no, if you do that, you're, you're in some trouble. I, I've tried doing that and I've been in trouble. So okay. I stick to <laughs> one pill and one serving. Oh, man. You see, that's me. I no, I'm not even going to make that comment because I'm not trying to get in trouble. I'm looking for sponsors and <laughs> not my shy away. But that is, oh, like I said, Val, I got to push you up on the prayer list. Ask the Lord to work a miracle for it, <laughs> in, in your favor where that's concerned. But man, you made the Olympic team last year. You balled out. You earned your way on Team USA. And you're looking to do the same thing again in Eugene, which is like, I would love to say that Eugene is just around the corner. And if you're comparing the demographics, it's right there, but it's easier to fly to London than it is Eugene. Um, 
So, you know, I'm don't even get me started on that. I'm planning a vacation for like 10 days in Europe and it's going to be cheaper than six days in Eugene. That is awful. There's so much I want to say that I'm not going to say, except Gene, I need you to get an airport that's compatible and easy for everybody to get into. Let's get more direct flights going to Eugene. Yeah. Agreed. Uh, um, but how's the season going for you? How's everything going leading up to USA's? That's a good question. I haven't really had an opportunity to really talk about it, but after Mount Sac and kind of leading into Mount Sac, I was dealing with some stuff with, um, I probably shouldn't talk about it now, but I can probably talk about more of it after USA's, but I was dealing with some stuff that actually prevented me from racing at pre and it prevented me from training as hard as I would have liked to. And luckily though, it passed pretty quickly and I was able to get right back on to workouts about a month after, you know, kind of be taken out and, I'm feeling fit. I'm feeling ready. And, you know, it's a final push two and a half weeks. And so just enough time to get some high quality steeplechase workouts in, uh, before the big race. That is crazy. It is still crazy to me that the season is almost over. Like that is, that is bonkers to me. But like I said, last year, you had an incredible season. Um, you know, just making it to the Olympics. I don't think people realize how hard it is just to get to <laughs> Japan, just to get to the Olympic team, you know, let alone compete. How have you been able to carry that momentum that you built last year into this cycle, even with the setback? Yeah. Um, I was after the Olympics, I was super psyched, but I was also kind of a little bit bummed out because I thought that I had raced too much and I was feeling super burnt out by the time the Olympics eventually rolled around. And so this year I was super motivated to just have kind of more of a perfect lead up to a season and schedule things around like anticipating being able to make another team. Mm -hmm. And so that just meant a little bit less steeplechase racing and a couple more off distance racing. And I've just been so excited to kind of see where my fitness is and to really push myself in all of these off distance races. Um, Cause this winter I raced a mile and a flat three K. And then I also early, early season, I think April 1st, I ran a 1500 um, all before running my first steeplechase at Mount Sac. And so I was really excited to kind of show people that I'm not just a steeplechaser, that I am fit, that I can do other races. And so it's been really fun to kind of see where I'm at and where I'm headed. It's so funny. I have all these distance people on the show and when they tell me what they run it gives me lactic acid. Like the show's <laughs> title is just fitting. As someone who just threw the shot put in the discus it's like oh my gosh this is crazy but i actually think that that's actually really cool um this is just my point of view i feel like mentally it keeps you fresh because that has to be like you're consistently running the steeplechase the steeplechase the steeplechase but like you know you try this event you try that event and then obviously it serves a purpose but mentally you're not as you know just like so focused on it obviously it's for the big goal but it allows you to have some fun am I wrong in, in thinking that you're totally right I mean it is fun to run these off distances and it is fun to kind of take that mental break because the steeplechase is a super mentally demanding event you've got all these barriers you've got water you've got to run seven and a half laps with all this crap on the track that you have to jump <laughs> over not to mention all these people falling down in front of you and causing all this chaos. And so, you know, last year I raced, let me count really fast. So I did a steeplechase at CU. I did a steeplechase in Oregon. I did a steeplechase in California, went back to Oregon for another steeplechase. Then I had to run two at USA's and two at the Olympics. So, so eight, last year, eight. seven. seven. Oh yeah. Eight. Eight. I thought okay. my math was wrong. Eight. I had to run eight steeplechases last year. And by the end uh -huh. of the year, I was toasted. And this year I've only run one. And so I'm feeling really mentally fresh coming into USA's ready to hopefully rip two more. Man, that is, 
thing about the steeplechase, that's one on the event list that I would never do because it takes some <laughs> takes bravery. Because here's the thing. You're running in circles. So essentially a mile. It's like the what's that um show on NBC, the about the warrior, like when you're talking oh, ninjas. About, ninjas, yeah. It's the ninja of the 1500. It's like a ninja 1500 race. Or really more than that. Because <laughs> wow. Just thinking about it, this is two miles, two miles and some change. Mm-hmm. And the thing about the steeple is you know in the 400 hurdles 100 hurdles if you you know jump over it wrong then it's like okay fine whatever the hurdle drops no the that hurdle is not moving if you mess up you're moving that hurdle is like steadfast and immovable um didn't think i could put that bible verse in there but found a way to put it in there but yeah you're you're not moving you're jumping in the water and then it was blazing hot at times last year and stuff like that so man and they like they put the steeplechase in the middle of the day because they think oh they're splashing in water they're gonna cool down and it's like no if you're good at the steeplechase you're not touching that water at all and you're just no. out there roasting you're touching the edge of the water if mm-hmm. anything and i can tell you as someone who has born and raised in florida when you're running i don't care if it's the 100 the 200 the the steeplechase that sun in the middle of the day is leaning on you (laughs) and stuff like Mm -hmm. that or it's reflecting oregon has the nice shiny buildings and a lot of these stadiums do there's something that the light reflects off of that sun is just beaming on you that makes it 10 times harder (laughs) like yeah it feels like you're in a toaster getting just blasted from all sides seriously like the steeple honestly should probably be either bright early in the morning or at night a part of the distance classic i would put it on a friday night and i would stick it between the 5k and the 10k Mm -hmm. i that that's just me obviously my opinion is irrelevant in that (laughs) but uh that's just me because it's just like that's not and then you're kind of, you know, wears you down. And then listen, I learned this the hard way playing football. Sometimes if water gets on your body, that does more harm than good. Yes. So, but you, the ice cream is fitting because like I said, I consider you, I know I say this word a lot, but it's my show and I can pretty much think how I want to. I consider you <laughs> the goat. Like you are. Why? Like, because who you know, who do you know? It's not that you have a full-time job. That is, that's hard enough. But you have to deal with people. And I said this on the show. I had to say it. Uh, when Allie Feller came on here, I, you know, she kind of helped me feel better about saying it. But people suck, mm-hmm. especially now. So, but you're dealing with customer service is something that you love. And you still go out and get that mileage in. I'm like, can we give her an honorary medal? Like the Nobel Peace Prize. Like we got to call up like President Biden and be like, yo, we got to get her the Nobel Peace Prize because who do you know that's putting the team on your back like <laughs> Val is? How is that dynamic really enhanced your passion for the sport? As crazy as that might sound. It's, I mean, honestly, getting a full-time job was one of the most liberating things I ever did. Um, I was working part-time jobs before I got this full-time job. And I was just so stressed out with these part-time jobs because it wasn't enough money and it wasn't enough security. And getting the full-time job, you know, I have insurance. I have like a 401k. I get paid enough to actually survive here in Boulder. Um, But, you know, working with customers is tough. Like sometimes when there's an issue and it's not your fault and the customer is just mad and they're just sending you all these mean messages or you're on a phone call and they start screaming at you, that's hard. It's Mm -hmm. really hard. And But it kind of teaches you a little bit of goldfish brain, which I think is great for the steeplechase where, you know, something bad happens. You got to move on because after this phone call with this angry customer ends, you have another phone call with a customer and you can't expect that phone call is going to be bad. You have to expect it's going to be fine. And then, you know, you just move on from phone call to phone call, from chat to chat, email to email. And 
you just hope that it keeps getting better or you make it better. And so <laughs> it's taught me a lot about resilience and just trying to go with the flow. Am I crazy to say that? Because when I first like really read that, you know, you had a full time job in addition to this, I'm like, Lord have mercy. Like, I, that would drive me crazy. But when you think about it, your identity is not wrapped up in steeplechase. It's not wrapped up in track and field. It's it's beyond that. And I don't want to say having a full-time job verifies that, but it shows that you are more than just a sport. Um, does that help you mentally? Just, just to know that, just to have that assurance and have that confidence, you know, through a job, you know, working in customer service, which, you know, at some days, like you just said, it's like emptying porta potties, you know, you're just catching crap all day, but you know, I, I don't know. The more I thought about it, I was like, that is really cool. Like that's, that's awesome. It's honestly great because, you know, as a professional runner, at least as a track specific runner, the season's so short, like we already mm -hmm. talked about. And even if you race indoor, you only race for like a month or two. And then outdoor is really only a couple months long too. And then you've got the rest of the year, you know, six to eight months where, you know, you're just running base mileage and lifting weights and like trying not to lose your mind with all these long, slow miles. And so to have yeah. something like to think about or to look forward to after training, like, oh man, score. I don't have to just sit at home and doom scroll all day. I can go home <laughs> and, and answer these emails and do something that I'm good at. Because at this point, I've had this job for almost two years now and I'm, I'm pretty good at it. And so I can answer these emails with confidence. I know what's going on. I've been looped into some pretty cool projects. And so it's kind of fun. It's just another confidence booster. And I, I really like it. Listen, I'm mad at it. I think it's really cool. I saw one of the projects that you got a chance to do recently. Um, I think it was like the VO2 max, if I'm not mistaken, or something like in that area of expertise. Hey, that is really cool. So I'm not mad at it. But we've talked a little bit too much about track. We'll get back to that a little bit later. But the hard hitting questions are what the people want to know. What are three things that people do not know about you? Um, good question. I don't know if people know, well, people might know, but I have two cats and I'm kind of a crazy cat lady now. Like oh they're, they're my babies. Like I love them so much. I just like play with them and like give them hugs. And so people that know me know that I'm totally crazy for my cats. <laughs> okay. Another thing people might not know is in high school, well, middle school, high school, I was super into skiing because I grew up in Vail. And so I loved it. Like I would ski every single weekend. I would okay. try to ski whenever I could. Um, and I haven't skied in something crazy like seven years because I'm just so afraid of getting injured because yeah. skiing is so dangerous. Mm. Okay. And the third thing is so. I guess the third thing is I am really excited about traveling the world and I'm super grateful that running is one of the things that's going to help me do that. But also I'm just excited to travel the world for fun as well. Like I, I really want to make an effort that after, you know, track season is over at the end of every summer that I try to go somewhere new and fun and have like a non-running related international oh, yeah. experience. Because you really don't get that traveling to these meets because you have to be off your feet and then you're there for a limited time. Honestly, uh, we need to get somebody to sponsor Val to pay for those trips. I'm just saying, you know, that, that would be nice. Uh, that would be really cool. <laughs> yes, we got to do that. Then you got to do a vlog. You gotta that would be sweet. Yeah, a travel you got to do that. Yes um and then as the young kids are in the tiktok i'm 28 but like it, it's still these kids that are, that are like 12 have iphones which was crazy to me <laughs> but um they're good at like this blog stuff tech you know technology stuff i'm saying track star travels the world i'm just saying that could be the new mtv crips but <laughs> that is interesting 
I I tried skiing. I told you before the show I went to Breckenridge for my single yeah. ski trip. And I was like, oh man, I'm in my head, one of the shows I used to watch when I was younger was Rocket Power. And uh I remember they'd be surfboarding, but sometimes they'd be snowboarding and then the couple be skiing. And so that was like me. I had no idea how hard that was um, until I got on the mountain. I actually ran over my ski instructor, who was a former linebacker for the <laughs> University of Virginia, <laughs> and sprained my ankle. And I was like, and, and it was so crazy because like, I'm like down, I'm like, I need help. And they put you in this, like, if you get hurt, I don't even know how to describe it, but it was like a, a gurney or whatever, gurney or whatever. It's called it a is. toboggan. Okay. Oh, I got put in a toboggan. Yeah, and then as, I'm, as they're taking me, wherever they took me, these drunk people had a moment of silence uh, because I honestly believe they thought I was dead. And I was like, what in the heck is going on, man? So, you know, people who ski made the good Lord bless and keep you. I wish I had it like that. So I just can't. I understand the danger of it. But it is a fun thing to do. It's, it's especially if you can get to the top of the mountain. So you ski like the blacks and all that stuff. Yeah. So, you know, anything that you point to on the map on the Vail Mountain or Beaver Creek Mountain, I have skied it. So what's your, what's your favorite place that you've gone to ski? So I've actually, I loved skiing, but I never really went that many places. I really exclusively skied Vail and Beaver Creek and the sister mountains of Beaver Creek, like in that area. Cause Vail and Beaver Creek are only like a 10 minute drive apart. Oh, wow. And so I could ski those two super easily from where we lived, but the other places I've skied, um, a basin, Arapaho basin, um, okay. right before the Eisenhower tunnel here in Colorado. And then I've also skied winter park and I've skied, I've skied Breckenridge too yeah. and Aspen, but I mean, considering I was skiing for my whole young adult life, I really didn't ski that many mountains. And so once I'm done with this professional running thing, I would really like to try to learn more about these amazing Hills we have here. Or even like overseas, like the Swiss Alps and oh my gosh that fits in with my travel plans yeah like that would be really cool I don't know I'm not <laughs> what my thought is six I was gonna say six next year's an off year but I forgot next year's world championships as well <laughs> I just totally yeah. forgot about that um but 25 is an off year so yeah 25 listen just say listen I just need to take a breather for a year uh, and then yeah like a track I don't know that would be really cool just to experience that not even just to ski but just to be on the ski lift just to oversee everything um, and just to see the beauty of like the all of it that is that's dope I'm afraid of heights so I'm I'm giving you the suggestions to do it because it's something I would never do you don't want to sit on the lift thousands Listen, of feet above the ground no because here's the thing like when you're with kids first of all I got stuck and I'm like yo like and it was windy I'm like listen like do I need to jump or something like that because like I, I need to get out of here so um yeah that's that's not my cup of tea it's beautiful but I mean I have my eyes closed the entire time um <laughs> And then, like, I need it to be in the one where it's, like, the bubble, almost not the open ski chair. Yeah. Because I just knew, as clumsy as I am, like, like Lord, you know I'm coming to see you in 30 seconds. <laughs> because <laughs> no. I, was, cause I was like, I, I'm about to fall, and that's about to be it. So that's why I'm telling you, to live vicariously. I will live vicariously through your experience, which is why I want you to do it. Um, I'm surprised you like Colorado so much after this horrific <laughs> Breckenridge trip. It was not because I stopped skiing <laughs> and <laughs> <laughs> after the second day. First of all, I told you I live in Florida. The weather was beautiful. It felt like a Hallmark movie walking around Breckenridge. Like it was just, I remember there was a guy smoking a joint that came up to yeah. me right before weed was legal to tell me about Jesus. I had the best crepes I had like ever had. I had the best hamburgers. I was like, man, like this is, if this is I good. ever 
if I ever make it, I have to come here again. <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, that is cool. I don't know. You could be like a professional, what those skiers or whatever the case might be. That would actually be pretty dope. That would be so cool. I would yeah. love that. For a while, I wanted to be a professional skier. And then I wasn't good enough to be a ski racer because those people are crazy. They are and insane. I couldn't, and I couldn't fly around like the people do the freestyle people. Mm-hmm. I, I could do a 180, but as soon as I got going with 360s, I was just like hitting my head too hard because I was falling <laughs> down. And I was like, oh. I can't keep doing this. Oh no, that that's that's not good for the cranium. No. Uh, is, yeah. <laughs> oh man. Hey, that's okay. There's no track athlete that can do what you can do on the ski slopes. So you can take pride in that. I promise you that. I will. I'll take pride uh, in that. I was gonna say Lolo Jones, but she's bobsled, which is pretty tough too. But as far as like downhill skiing, that's you. But <laughs> I actually read of something interesting. You were in the band back in the day. Oh yeah, I played the French horn. Oh, wow. Yeah. That is so rare. But I love the French horn. See, I I used to I never played in the band, but I grew up playing the drums and like I love the instrument and instruments and all that stuff the French horn and I think you played I forgot the other instrument the I also piano played piano yeah. yeah how much uh did you love music is it still something that you can kind of take with you even at this phase of life I loved music growing up as a kid I thought it was the coolest thing ever and <clears throat> back home in Bale there's like a really great connection between like the uh, summer concerts at in Vail and the New York Philharmonic. The, oh, really? It, yeah. There's like a really great connection. I don't even know how that happened, but the New York <laughs> Philharmonic would always come every summer. And I got like looped in with them somehow and like got to meet the musicians and I went to all the concerts growing up. And so I was a huge classical music fan as a kid And then when I had the opportunity to like learn an instrument in middle school at the public school, I was so excited about the French horn because I had like fallen in love with it, listening to all this classical music in the summers. Um, So I really, really liked it, but there's just not enough hours in the day to do everything because then, you know, in college, I studied engineering and that was pretty hard and I was you know traveling yeah and so there just there just wasn't enough time for me to like continue to practice the piano and the French horn and plus I could never afford a French horn and I was just using the ones that the public schools had and so there just like wasn't enough time or money for me to really like continue those hobbies but you know music is something that you can pick up at any time. There's all these incredible apps out there where you can learn to play the guitar or piano. And so I think that kind of when I'm done with this professional running and this super busy full-time job, and I'm like in the mood to learn something else, I think I would love to sit back down and pick up the piano again, buy a keyboard at Goodwill or something and get back into it. But there's just not enough hours in the day. I know. It's crazy. That is... uh... That was really cool. I, I, um, in addition to the drums, when I was in elementary school, I played the um, violin. Um, and so they didn't let us, <laughs> you see, I went to public school before our, you know, middle school. So they weren't about to let us mess up a French horn. Um, <laughs> they figured, yeah, that's, that's just too expensive to replace. So you guys can take care of the violin. But like, it just sparked my love for, just smooth jazz like that's that's my go-to just jazz music you know certain classical things I haven't been to the Philharmonic I know we have a really good one here at the Orlando uh Philharmonic and then like the Trans-Siberian Orchestra comes for Christmas and all that stuff which is like legit but I don't know I can see you like thriving as a musician I was pretty good but I just Like I said, there just wasn't enough time to actually get good because it just takes hours. It does. But I feel like there should be a heavy discount for athletes when it comes to (laughs) musical instruments because you can sell the product so well. Like, stay in school, kids. Like, if you want to be like Val, 
spend an hour each day on the piano. Um, mm-hmm. And I think you can probably, you know, relate to it as well. And I think that's why I love music so much. And, you know, when I get, you know, money, um, I would like to save up and buy another violin. Mm-hmm. You're not limited to anything. Like you can play whatever you want to. You can play Beethoven or you can play B.B. King or you can play, I don't know what the kids listen to these days, but Bad whatever. Bunny. Ba- mad bunny or bad bad bunny, bunny. <laughs> what is that he's a rapper he's a mexican rapper i was just making a joke i don't think he has any like piano songs but <laughs> i've never heard of him i thought you said mad bunny i was like isn't that a movie like why is he mad but bad bunny, um, i mean why just... is bad bunny bad i don't yeah, know why is he bad why can't he be like the easter bunny Those yeah are the why questions not? That me. <laughs> but you majored in engineering so you have your engin- degree in engineering yeah I do wow can you build an airport like in Eugene <laughs> and stuff like that well my degree is pretty close to civil engineering oh but never mind. not oh. exactly civil engineering so oh man. <laughs> sorry that's okay it's just it's but that's like you're literally like the jack of all trades but the master of almost all of them uh, I don't know. I'd say the only thing I've really mastered is staple chains. Hey, listen, that's that's good enough. I actually watch <laughs> you have um a YouTube um gosh, I can't talk now. You have a YouTube page. And so I yeah. actually watched um one of the videos, and it was actually really cool, the day in the life. Oh yeah. And, uh I actually really enjoyed that because it it was very informative. I was jealous because of the weather, but uh, it was cold. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh man. But one thing that I have mad respect for is that at the end of a hard day, you bake cookies. Mm-hmm. How did that tradition start? And can you tell the people why they should do that? I actually started doing that in college because it was. It's always been a fun thing. For me to do and I, I baked a ton in high school like I loved baking in high school it was my, one of my favorite activities to do on the weekend and I, I tried to continue that tra- tradition into college and so it was always a fun thing that I would want to do with my roommates where we would say like oh let's go to the store and get some stuff and make some cookies and so I had a couple different roommates in college but with all those roommates we would make cookies and it's fun I mean I think that people can get really wrapped up in the details and trying to be perfect and too stressed out. And I think that just taking the time to make some cookies and enjoy them with your friends is just so fun. And I, I love to do it. I'll have to make some cookies. I made some brownies like a couple days ago, but now I need to buy some stuff to make some cookies because you inspired (laughs) me to get back on that. Listen, them cookies look good. Like I was like, dang, See, I don't, I'm, I can cook, I can cook, but when it comes to baking, I can't, I cannot make, make a batch of cookies to save my life. Like See, I, baking I, for me, easy, because it's chemistry, and I basically studied chemistry in college, so. Okay, easy. so the people who are good at math are better bakers, is what you're saying. <laughs> Maybe. Because <laughs> math was... <laughs> Math, that was not my go-to, but you you bring it in chemistry and all that stuff, which was the worst class in the world to take. Oh, oh man. God, that was a nightmare. Um, yeah, no wonder my cookies suck because <laughs> I was bad at chemistry. But my Yeah, cookies, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, but like the cookies I make, I feed it as charcoal for a grill. Oh, like, no. Like I try everything. Like I put the piece, somebody said, put a piece of bread in the middle of the pan because it makes them softer. So I put a whole loaf of bread there and oh. it's just like, 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 why, what am I, I, I stood there and watched, like, is this some kind of punishment? <laughs> but no, I saw those cookies. I was like, man, those cookies look good. Like, where can I buy some of those? Um, <laughs> have you ever like thought about like, well, well, let me ask you this. What's the best thing that you can bake? I used to make this cinnamon bread that was pretty good. Ooh, it was like, mm-hmm, it was called cinnamon pull apart bread. And it was bread that I was making from scratch. So I was buying yeast and wow. flour and like letting it rise and then doing stuff to it and then letting it rise again. 
And it was a complicated process, but totally worth it because that bread was top notch bread. Oh my gosh. I don't think people understand how hard that is to do. Like, and you got to have time to do it. Yes. And that's the hardest part is like, you know, for, for making this bread, you have to set aside probably like two, two or three hours to commit to making this stuff. And that's not an easy task for people to be like, oh, do you have three hours to make bread? No, I'm just going to go to Costco and buy some bread, right? No, it's, it's because the bread has to rise and it has to, sometimes it has to rise a second time. Yeah. Um, so it's funny. I see these chefs, um, sometimes they'll be making stuff in their exquisite kitchens and with their multi-million dollar products that they got for free and i'm not mad at it because listen that would be they listen they earned it they know how to cook they earned it um i wish they would send what they don't want to people like me <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. and then like to you i mean you probably you deserve it more than i do because you um are actually good at what you do well you uh, need it I, so it can help you learn better i well apparently i need to go back and take chemistry <laughs> and then <laughs> <laughs> and then we can kind of we got to learn to walk before we run <laughs> um but they're like oh it's a simple recipe just takes a just an hour or two or whatever the case might be you can do anything I'm like what <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. like if you have nothing to do then you can say oh it just takes an hour and everything like that but no, like when you're jumping over barriers and dealing with people all day, every day, you don't have, cause you got your professor out there, you got to sleep too. I know. I know. Oh my gosh. Do you watch any of the baking shows like on Food Network? Cause I'm like, we kind of need to call brother Duff and be like, yo, <laughs> we got to get you on a holiday baking championship. Oh my gosh. I would need to craft my skills. I would need to be like, hey work, I need to get some PTO. I got to get two weeks dial these skills in so I can go cook because right oh now gosh. it's just like super simple stuff because I just don't have like the time to like practice a whole lot so oh, man. I would need some time to really but I, I feel confident that I'd be able to maybe do okay on one of those shows I don't think I'd be the first one out if there was like 10 people I might be like the second one out <laughs> what what um time of the year would you want to compete in Oh, the baking shows. Mm -hmm. Oh, I actually love Halloween. It's like my favorite holiday. And so I would probably <laughs> want to do like a Halloween thing because okay. I love all the spooky stuff and like, you know, pumpkins and pumpkin spice and all the fall flavors. So I'd probably want to do Halloween spooky baking challenge. Okay. I can dig that. I hate pumpkin. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's just from the area which I'm from. But if pumpkin, if they made a law banning pumpkin, I would support it wholeheartedly. I just, <laughs> I just hate the taste of it so bad. It just, but people love it. I don't understand why, but I'm not going to hate it. <laughs> uh, the Halloween, I feel like I don't really do Halloween uh, because I don't like being scared. And I will say this though, Halloween and Valentine's Day, if you go to CVS at the right time, you get 75% off the chocolate. So mm -hmm. I, I can't not uh, refute that. But I feel like you can decorate so much. Like when they do the spring baking championships, I'm like, there's only so much that you can do. Like just like some flowers and a sun and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you know, mine is, you know, the holiday baking championships. I love Christmas is my favorite holiday. Um, you know, I get Christmas like it's about to be July here in a few weeks. So, you know, my uh, Christmas in July will be popping. But <laughs> um, I feel like you could do so much. I actually feel like you could win because you can do, you'd be so creative when it comes. Like you can do a ghost jumping over a steeplechase, like a, the hurdle for a steeplechase into the wall. Nobody else would think about that. No. I would do that. You can do a pumpkin answering phone calls on a computer <laughs> with the yes. witch's hat. <laughs> Let's go. I'm just, I'm just telling you. 
Like I could see a pumpkin cake mm-hmm. with a cape that says USA on the back of it <laughs> with the computer. I'm telling you. Or on some skis. Oh man, listen. I'm I, I'm just telling We're you. We're winning. We're gonna We're win winning. the championship, right? That's here. that's that's a dub. That is what we call yep. a dub. Um, Agreed. <laughs> and oh man, that is awesome. I got myself excited about what I could watch <laughs> you do on television. That would be that would be lit. Um, <laughs> but what do you usually do when you're not answering calls, baking, running over hurdles, all that fun stuff? I'm actually a pretty of- boring person in general. Like. I don't really, I just do a few things and that's it. Other than that, I'm, I read some books, I watch some TV and I just try to sleep as much as humanly possible. But that's not boring. That's, th- <laughs> that's thriving. Okay. Facts. Maybe I'm thriving. You're thriving. Like, <laughs> okay. Nobody's making you do anything. You do what you want to do at your own time, at your own pace. You're thriving. What you mean? That's boring. <laughs> so since I just had, it, and then we'll, we'll we'll start to wrap this up with a bow. What's the go-to television series you've been checking out, or kind of what's your? I'm actually curious about this. What's your genre of television? Like, what's your favorite genre era of television and era of television? Oh my gosh. Well, so there's really my television gets split into two categories. There is like comfort TV, where if I'm stressed out. I just put it on and I'm cooking and it's just on. And then the other one is like TV that I'm actually interested in that like I sit down and it's a, it's an experience. Like as soon as I'm done cooking, I turn off that one show and I turn on the show that I'm really interested in. Like and that. so those first shows that I don't really care too much about, but I really like, they're the classic like sitcom things like Friends, Gilmore Girls, Parks and Rec, The Office, just like shows that are reliable, that I've seen every episode, that are funny, and I like them. And then the shows that I'm super interested in is, I was really into Game of Thrones, and so I watched those. And then I also love Stranger Things, so I just binged that entire, you know, season four over the weekend. And then I also have been watching Peaky Blinders and... I want to start Euphoria soon, but okay. I kind of want to hold off on that and kind of watch that when I'm done with my season so that I can mm. not be thinking about anything else and really just watch Euphoria. I like that. That's what I'm telling you. You're thriving. No, <laughs> no, like nobody who is not thriving categorizes. See, that's why you have to like to thy own self be true. Some dude that was famous, more famous than me said that. I forgot his name. Um, but I don't think he's watching this anyway, so I think I'm okay. But <laughs> like that is thriving. That is just I'm telling you fam, you're walking W and W means oh, win. Always have to ask about the food. What's the go-to meal that you whip up? I've been super into like these fresh like summer burrito bowls where I'll like cook up some and this is where you're going to think that I'm a little weird but I actually really like the impossible meat above like regular ground burger meat. I don't think that's I don't think that's weird um so like the uh the plant-based the plant-based meat no i don't think that's weird i had a plant-based I, oh god this is crazy but i went to uh we had veg fest here and it was when i was in college and i went to go cover it and um i'm somebody who food is it's i will mess about my food so i had i had it um it was a burger based i don't i don't know what was in it and i'm glad i didn't ask um <laughs> but it was really good <laughs> like the beyond meat burger yeah. uh, stuff like that and stuff like yeah um i mean i don't think it's weird i mean if, if you season it right then yeah i don't think that's, so weird that's what all. i've been cooking up just like some burrito bowls with this impossible meat and it's really good because it's easy i could if i don't feel like having a bowl i can throw it in a tortilla and make a burrito really quick or i can have a burrito bowl and so i've really been digging that recently uh, I actually really like that because it's very health conscious. It's like everybody eats Chipotle, but I find it better 
um, to make your own because you know exactly what you're putting in it. Uh, mm-hmm. Are you like a white rice, black beans kind of summery bowl? I don't know what a summer bowl is. Um, <laughs> so, so that's very interesting. And it's, it's something that I might try because it's, it's doesn't, it's not, doesn't sound too complicated to whoop up. It's super fast. And that's one of the reasons I like to make it because, you know, if I'm finishing work at around five and if I have to do another training run and if I have to lift weights, sometimes I don't like get a chance to start cooking until like six. Mm. And I really like to try to be like in bed, trying to get ready for bed by like eight 30 to try to get to sleep by nine 30. Cause you know, I wake up at like five 30 to get started on training and everything. And so I, it has to be done quickly. And so I make some, right now I have white rice and I really like pinto beans. And then I like fry up some onions and some bell peppers. Mm -hmm. And then I put those on and then I put that impossible meat in there and I lactose intolerant. So otherwise I'd use real cheese, but I put vegan cheese on top and then I eat it or I throw it in a tortilla. I mean, we've gone from bacon championships. We might have to put you on chopped like let's go okay i love that i'm not honestly i think i'm gonna try that this weekend it's good it's easy too super easy i think i'm gonna try that this weekend wow i appreciate that that sound make me hungry Um, i'm hungry for my dinner now too yeah that's that's why we're about to wrap this up with a bow i promise i promise (laughs) i know it's the day off so we're gonna keep it we're gonna keep it uh light one thing I'm curious about, you seem like a very naturally, not only nice person, but I've noticed this when you run, I noticed it in our conversation, is that you seem to have joy. Um, and so what brings you that joy? That's a great question. I didn't always have it. And now that I have it, I'm just so happy all the time. Um, really, I think it's just my situation where I'm just so comfortable with where I'm at and what I'm doing. And I don't, I don't really have any regrets. I don't really have any things that are stressing me out. And it's just, I mean, I I can't be sad in Boulder and I've got my cats, which I'm obsessively in love with. And I've got, you know, a boyfriend who I really like also, and my house is amazing and I'm, you know, financially super secure. And so I'm just happy and it's just easy for me to be happy here. And I don't think I would be the same way if I went anywhere else or was training with any other group. I just think that things have finally lined up and now I'm just reaping like the full benefits of just like everything kind of going the way that makes me comfortable. You're exactly like where you need to be. And it's like, everything is, uh, taking shape for what's meant for you mm-hmm. for s- people who try to follow in your footsteps first of all you 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 are in an impressive lineage like I was going back to see that Colorado team and that women's team that you were on were like the Avengers like essentially <laughs> yeah <laughs> um you know <laughs> like you know, Danny Jones, yourself, and and Sage, and then you're under the umbrella of one of the GOATs. Um, she's huge here in Central Florida. I mean, she rewrote the record book, and I think she still has it, and that being Jenny Simpson. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. Beloved here in the state of Florida for what she did in high school athletics, but you're a part of that. Like, have you ever, like, stopped to think about that? I know in an interview, we're like, eh, I was so-so. But it's like, nah, you are, like – not so so you are a part of a historic lineage and what you did and were able to achieve is something that will go down forever have you ever you know stopped and reflected on that oh yeah definitely I mean I think every time I you know look at the mountains it, it just reminds me of like where I am and what what has been just given to me. And I've like almost inherited in a way. And I still train at CU with, you know, Mark and Heather and Billy, and I still train with the CU women's team and with Jenny. And so it's just, it's so incredible to be surrounded by that. And 
it, it really is something that I think about all the time. And it honestly makes me speechless because of how you know, privileged I am to, to have been a part of it and to have been accepted into the program and to have actually had success in the program. And because it's not easy, like a lot of people that come to see you don't become as successful as, you know, Jenny Simpson, Emma Coburn, Danny Jones, myself, like Sage, there's, but the people who can make it work, really make it work. And it is just so inspiring. And I get to watch, you know, I'm a volunteer assistant coach at CU. So I get to watch this new group of women just kind of really come into their own and watch them just totally excel. It's amazing. Last question before uh, we wrap this up with uh, rapid fire. What's the legacy that you want to leave in the sport when it's all said and done? I would really like to be able to shed some light on kind of some more realities that track and field athletes have to deal with. I know that a lot of track and field athletes like to put on this persona and like to put up this facade that it's glamorous and sexy and amazing and you get to travel the world and make tons of money. But honestly, none of that is true. It's not glamorous. It's mostly heartbreak and it's not sexy. I mean, I throw up on myself like once a week in practice and very few actually do get to travel the world. And when you do, like you said, you don't really get to see it. And most people don't make very much money. There might be a few that are making some money, but I have made very, very little money considering the success that I've had. And I would really like people to be aware of that so that when they are in a situation, when young, you know, collegiates or post-collegiates are in a situation where they're maybe romanticizing this idea of post-collegiate running, that they have a better idea of understanding that, you know, it's not really a very romantic thing. It's kind of gritty and hard and that's okay. I, I still love it. I still wake up every day psyched to go out there and suffer and try to be the best that I can be. And I know so many other people do, but I think that it could save a lot of people a lot of time if they kind of knew more about what they were getting themselves into with committing to post-collegiate running. How do we fix it where a collegiate athlete or even a high school athlete who's thinking, not even because it's crazy, this is one of the few sports that I can talk to over 50% and they can say, I had no idea that you can do this past college, um, which is crazy. But how do we fix it in your opinion as an athlete to where it's better for the future generation of track and field and cross country athletes even? Yeah, that's a great question. I think that one of the things that would really make a big difference is if, is for people like you to, to shed light on these athletes and to make the sport more engaging and to make the sport more entertaining and interesting. And I think that it's also partly on the athletes to do that as well, to really shed some light. You mentioned vlogging. Like I know that, you know, Ali Ostrander has a vlog and it's yeah. very popular and people watch it and it inspires people and it shows people what running is really like, but I think it would be really incredible if a larger organization tried to make some kind of docu-series or something just to get not only the general population, but people involved in the sport, some more insight and just more accessibility. Yeah. And, you know, let's not be on ESPN when somebody is doping, but actually when somebody achieve something noteworthy <laughs> yeah uh, that would be nice but you have survived the hard stuff the normal questioning um and it's time for the even harder stuff and that is what i like to call down the home stretch it's, it's a segment excuse me that i like to call down the home stretch and i'm going to ask you a few rapid fire questions i want you to answer them to the best of your ability if you do not it's really okay uh, it's, it's not the end of the world. I will say to preface my comments that if I stop you to, for you to elaborate, it does not count against the time. Are you ready? 
Yes. If you had to pick a superhero to describe your game on the track, who would you go with? Doctor Strange. Oh, I would love to hear about why <laughs> Doctor Strange. Uh, especially, I was told what the movie was the other night, this latest one. But why Doctor Strange? I'm interested in to hear. Interested to hear that. Doctor answer. Strange, because I, because his whole thing is he's trying to like use magic to solve problems creatively, and I think that Steeplechase is a pretty creative event. And I think that the way I race is sometimes creative um, and really tactical. And so I like that. I would say Dr. Strange. Okay. Shout out to Dr. Strange. I see you, big dog. You are thriving even in the track and field community. All right. If there was a food that you had to live with forever and live without, what would they be? Forever food would be hot Cheetos. And <laughs> my forever without food honeydew watermelon what is wrong with why do people hate honeydew <laughs> like why <laughs> i think it tastes super weird and I, every time i order like a fruit cup and there's honeydew in it i just get so mad oh man i mean you people make it seem like honeydew is the cauliflower of fruit i don't understand that <laughs> that's 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 okay don't flame in hot cheetos man that is childhood that is childhood mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they were going to make a movie about you they said val we're going to make a movie about you you get to pick the actress and you get to pick the name of the movie what's the actress that you would who's the actress that you would like to play your character and what's the name the title of the movie um this is probably ambitious but i would love it if blake lively played me i can see it i can see it um probably a little ambitious but that's okay she's cool and an amazing actress a uh, title of the movie um i don't maybe like boulder dreams or something i don't know but with boulder being like i like that i like see that's that's why she stay on top y'all that's why she <laughs> i'm trying to tell you that's why she killing it in the customer service game that creativity and everything i like that i love that <laughs> That is very awesome. Okay. Dream location to take a vacation. Well, currently I'm planning a vacation to Nice, France. Mm, okay. So that's the dream right now. But eventually I would love to plan a vacation to Tahiti oh, um, wow. because the oceans in Tahiti just look really nice. But short term goal, France. If there was a Food Network show that you would want to guest star on, it could be baking or cooking. Of all the shows they have, what, which one would it be? I, okay, I know it's not on anymore, but Hell's Kitchen with Gordon Ramsay. Why would you want to sign up for that? You already run the steeplechase. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's so angry and I think it's really entertaining. And I would actually love to be screamed at by Gordon Ramsay. That's like... That would be that, cool. That's a first. Okay. That's no, it's a judgment free zone. If that you want <laughs> Gordon Ramsay to make you feel like less of a person, then by golly, let's make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> they, they probably have a hell a version of hell's kitchen somewhere. All right. A couple more questions. If you were to have any dinner with anybody currently living, I don't do the dead, just living, who would it be? Hmm. Probably Barack Obama. Wow. Because he's a really smart dude. And I would just love to talk to him about his time as a human being on this earth because he is fascinating. I'm going to get back to the answer in just a second because I'm curious to hear your answer for this one. If you had to pick someone to narrate a race, the steeplechase, who are you rolling with? Uh, probably Snoop Dogg. Oh, boy. I. Oh my gosh, that would be amazing. Nobody, the and the reason I said that, because the number one answer for that question is Barack Obama. Oh. If, who you want to narrate a race. But no, because here's the thing about Barack, and again, this is a, this doesn't kind of get the time. It will make you, you will experience every emotion. 
as you're running, I don't care if you're in eighth place or first place or third place, it will make you happy. It will make you fall asleep. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of the race, he will make you cry because it's like a dad saying, I'm proud of you. Snoop Dogg. Oh my gosh. That will have to be closed caption and that will have to have a parental advisory sign. I am all for it, man. I'm not even gonna, I don't curse on this show. Uh, try not to curse at all, but I'm not even gonna, in my head, I just kind of know how it will go. And I'm for, I'm all for it. Oh my gosh, that just. Because he's so funny and he would not understand what was going on at all. And it would be legit. And then as soon as he finally did understand what was going on, he would be so funny. Like, did you see how deep is that water? Man, you yep. could drown in that. Like, yeah. Why don't somebody just kick that hurdle off the way? I would love that. That would be amazing. If you and had to people be people might watch track and field, it's Snoop Dogg. I'm telling you, <laughs> sponsors. Oh my gosh, have Snoop called USA's. Yep, let's go. USA's and, and Worlds. Oh my gosh, that that is insane. Okay, if you had to be the guest on any television show, it could be reality television, it could be Nickelodeon, Cartoon Network, it could be a talk show. Which show would you choose? probably family feud <laughs> well, with steve harvey <laughs> yeah because i just feel like it's always so funny and they they do the funniest things and steve harvey's just hilarious so oh man that would i mean you are killing these answers okay <laughs> last question what if you had to cook a gourmet meal who would you want to cook it with it could be a chef it could be anybody. Who would you want to cook it with and who would you want to serve it to? I think I'd want to cook the meal with my mom because she's an amazing cook. Okay. And serve it. You can't say Gordon Ramsay. No, I wouldn't serve it to Gordon Ramsay. I think I'd want, it would be really cool to get my whole family together and serve it to my whole family because we haven't had a family reunion in like such a long time I haven't seen some of my relatives in ages and so it would be really cool if we would all if we could all like get together that sounds extremely realistic I for you I hope that happens soon and very soon wow that is that's awesome Val you've completed down a home stretch and honest to gosh truth Sinclair Johnson was the winner but if you take out the distractions in which I told you there would be I you you you're the best that's, that's ever done this. So let's go. <laughs> uh, congrats on winning your first medal. Um, Thank you. So yeah, going for the goal. So last question: How are we rocking this year? What can we expect from you? Um. Well, I am really excited for USA's in less than twenty days at this point, and Crazy. I think that I think that this year the steeplechase is going to be another crazy year for interesting events to happen um some people haven't run it yet and are planning on opening up at usa's some people who haven't run it in a long time are trying to get qualifiers and people who have done incredibly well in the past you know haven't really run that great up until this point and so i think that if people can tune in to watch the steeplechase, they definitely should because it's going to be wild. Well, I think you're going to make it. I'm, I'm predicting that you're going to be on the team and I cannot wait to watch you and Eugene twice. I was going to say, <laughs> I was going to be like, oh, you can go to a different place, but really I'm going to watch you and Eugene twice. I believe <laughs> it. I appreciate you coming on the show. Where can the people find you on social media? I'm on Instagram. Uh, at Valerie Constein, no dots, no spaces, no underscores. Um, I am on TikTok also, not super great, but it's there. Also, Val, actually, I don't know what my TikTok handle is, but I'm sure if you search Valerie Constein, I'll show up. I'm also on Twitter. Don't really do much there, but you can check it out if you want. And, where and my can YouTube they find- channel, obviously. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Where can they find the YouTube series? Y'all need to watch both those uh, YouTube videos that she posted and subscribe to the channel. Definitely watch till the end so you can see how good the cookies look that I was referring to. Um, so yeah, definitely do that. Uh, Val's got me, man. She 
you stayed on TikTok longer than I did. I I had to go because I don't know what it is that I'm doing. Like I said, the young kids <laughs> of this generation has made me feel like a fossil, which is where I'm headed to the fossilization standpoint. But that's it for Lactic Acid. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram, Lactic Acid Podcast. YouTube, we're doing big things on YouTube, the Track Talk series where we just talk some hot takes and some advanced topics in the sport. Please be sure to check that out, especially as USAs and Worlds are approaching. We're going to have content on that. It's, it's, ah, it is exclusively on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts, Apple, Spotify, Google Podcasts. Be sure to like and subscribe. Leave a kind note if you would. It will make me feel better and also it helps the algorithm. It helps more people discover the show. And until Until next time, peace.